Ivan Major, MBE, born in Christchurch, New Zealand in October 1939, profession speedway rider, four times world speedway champion, three times world long track champion, captain of the Exeter Falcons, businessman, author and journalist, a champion amongst champions. Nobody seems to want to go. Come on, lads, get it out of the way, they go. And it's Major who hits the front end. Major hits the corner first and tries the outside, the wide outside, but Ivan Major's made a colossal first turn. Major in front. Major after his fourth title. Press chasing hard. I'm always aiming to win. It uh, doesn't always make me that popular, I don't think, but uh, I don't really see it as any other way. Second place really doesn't impress me very much, and... Uh, to win, that's everything. I really just want to win as much as I can. I never ever in, in my younger days thought that I would be satisfied with one World Championship. Very, very hard, but it doesn't look as though he's going to catch him. He's coming up on the inside now. They're coming on to their last lap after this corner now. Person still cannot close that gap. I tantalising. On the last lap, the world title is only five yards between them. It wasn't always like this. Ivan and I courted very young. We were married. I was 16 and he was 17. We had what everybody would think very small chance at that age of making a go of marriage. However, we left home in New Zealand, travelled to England, where our first child, Julie, was born. We had so much hardships in those days. Well. I don't really like to dwell on it too much, but there was bed sitters. I'd stay home with the baby while I and travelled. Wasn't too much fun, but the compensations came later and put up with hardships as long as you think that there's something ahead. Ivan was very ambitious those days, as he still is now. Ivan Major truly is a Speedway superstar. After two decades in the sport, he enjoys the luxuries that it has provided for him. But few would deny him these comforts, having devoted all his adult life to achieving them, and in so doing, giving the sport the credibility it now enjoys. In 1957, he arrived in Britain with his wife, Ray, and young family as a penniless teenager. What he lacked then in material wealth, he made up in a consuming wish to succeed. Few of the many thousands of fans who idolise this slight, unassuming New Zealander will ever appreciate the full sacrifices he and his family have had to make. Speedway, like most other professional sports, has become highly competitive and therefore very expensive. When Major began his career, his one underpowered machine and the few spare parts that went with it constituted the major part of his assets. Now, a spacious garage attached to his home in the Manchester stockbroker belt is full of every conceivable replacement part. Nuts, bolts, filters, chains, plugs, and highly tuned engines, tires, tanks, and racing leathers all adorn the walls and work benches. These are just some of the more obvious rewards for his acknowledged professionalism and dedication. My family's really had to suffer a lot because um, there's been lots of times we've gone to, let's say years ago when, when we were racing in uh, New Zealand and Australia, there wasn't enough money for me to go to um, a track 2,000 miles away <coughs> and take the family in, in comfort. And, but I needed the experience on those tracks and I needed to um, get a reputation all around in order to be brought back to England. 
Um, there was lots of things that really I had to do to further my career, and there was never enough money for us to do it in, in any kind of style. But they all went with me. We, you know, we we often scrimped and scraved and done it. Got there. They had to go without, and um, <clears throat> I had to go without as well. But of course, I was prepared to go without because I had something driving me. I wanted to be world speedway champion. All I wanted was a, probably a father and a, and a provider and a husband. But. As Major approaches an important meeting, although he claims that every meeting is important, he becomes tense, uncommunicative and moody, characteristics hardly likely to endear him to the crowd. But it's all part of the driving passion that makes him want to win. This same intenseness is evident in his two days a week physical training sessions at Main Road Manchester and his occasional mechanical workouts at Bellevue Speedway Track. Man and machine being honed to perfection, or as near to it as he can get it. I train with footballers and I'm 10 or 12 years older than most of them and it's hard work to keep up to them but then a couple of nights later when I'm racing against speeder riders near my own age or just a little bit younger it's no problem to outstay them all night when, when maybe a few of them will halfway through the meeting I can still keep going. It's a sport that you've got to be really physically fit and mentally alert. I've got a slick bit of gate to start on here so I've only got to have about quarter throttle on otherwise I get far too much wheel spin. Let the clutch in very slowly. Not too many rears. That's gripping good. Keep it gripping now. Speed it on now, they come out of the corner. Shut the front off a bit to get the grip. On the heavy gate, you just got to wind her up quite a bit and just drop the clutch, not feed it out at all. And now the back wall is gripping good now. Ease the front off of it to get some grip. Make a wider break. Turn back, drive the line with the wheels in the line. It's four years now since Major was World Speedway Champion. At 37, he's a veteran in a youngster's sport. As each year goes by, more and more people are voicing doubts about whether he can stay at the top. With seven World Championship titles to his credit and an almost faultless league record, Major's happy to ignore any speculation about his future and rely on his own fox-like intuition, which will warn him when it's time to hang up the leathers and turn to promotion and management. You know, I'm really not only a speedway rider, I'm quite a student of speedway. All my, all my years before I even was a rider and, and in my younger days as a, as a rider, I always observed the older riders, who was on the way out, who was on the way in. I do that now through the training schools as well. I've always got my eye on the 18-year-old, 19-year-old fellas, what they're doing and so on. And uh, I think quite a few with some of the old, older champions over the years, I've assessed when I think they ought to retire. And I think, probably for me, the time for me to retire will be when I realise I can't be world champion anymore, I don't really want to ride speedway anymore. And um, I really think that if, that if I'm honest with myself, and normally I am with my own performances, I think I'll be the first one to know that. And uh, I don't want to race when I can't be world champion anymore. As in most other sports, mental alertness is the key to speedway. As the tapes go up for the next heat, valuable points are won or lost before reaching the first bend. Major is determined to get to that bend first. Well prepared mentally is another big thing. We're going to be very sharp off the start and 
not only to win races, but be very sharp to, to avoid uh, a serious accident, even death. I've had a uh, lot to do with Ollie Olsen, he's world champion, one of the most devastating riders in the world. And Peter Collins, uh, I was at Bellevue in, in Peter's first couple of years when he was getting going. So, like I'm about six years older than Ollie and 15 or 16 older than Peter, I think. So, um, I think that I'm going to leave Speedway in good hands. and. Uh, I'd like to be remembered probably in another 10 or 12 years as, as the person who got Ollie going and maybe Peter in his early days had done a lot, lot to help him when he, was, when he was a novice. Well, not really a novice, when he just come into the Bellevue team. I spotted him first, I got him into the Bellevue team. A lot of these things are not really direct man-to-man um, -man relationship where you tell somebody something. It's something that accumulates over a time. There's been lots of others, Scott Autry at Exeter and... Um, like in my time in Speedway, none of the old fellas ever really brought me on and told me the sort of things I had to do. They would maybe tell a gear ratio, but not all the things that you've really got to do to be a champion. And um, I'd like to be remembered by that. I, I know in my, myself that what I've given to Speedway, which I changed the image quite a lot. I think I had a lot to do with that. It was years and years ago. It was a it was looked on as, as a Hells Angels, dirty cinder uh, type of sport. And no one was really bothered about that image. That bothered me even before I was a star and before I started winning world championships or anything like that. And uh, that was one of the first things I'd done when I won the world championship. I thought I've <coughs> I'm more conscious of being world champion in every other country that I race at other than England now because the English Speedway fans and the promoters and even my co-riders in England have become accustomed to the fact that every year, I think probably except one or two in the last 20 or 25 years, the world champion has raced in England. So now really, uh, people in England ex just expect to have the, the world champion in the British League. The final race between these two Speedway giants, it's all between them now, Olsen and Major. Can Olsen do it? Can Olsen win this one?